Get out, ladies and gentlemen. Get out, ladies and gentlemen. I kind of regret that I chose a tongue twister as my intro phrase. G'day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza, and recently I've noticed a lot of comments in my videos that have suggested I try drawing with a 3D pen. Now, I've never used a 3D pen before, but I contacted the people at Scribbler 3D Pens who make this. This is the V3 of their 3D pen lineup. Basically, I told them, you guys want to see me use it. Could they send me one to use? And they did, so I'm going to use that today. But I'll put a link in the description and in the card, and you can see the lineup that they have and uh, the, the products they offer. But uh, basically, Today's gonna to be a bit of a play. I wouldn't call it an extensive review by any stretch of the imagination It really is just gonna be opening this thing up seeing how it works and seeing what we can make So once again, I'll reiterate I haven't seen or used this or anything like this before This is what it looks like when you open it up. Ooh, stop Okay, if I have a problem, I'll contact him here rather than show whatever problems I have in a video That's gonna reach hundreds of thousands of people because that would be awkward. <laughs> Yay, more instructions. I'm a bit lazy when it comes to instructions. I kind of skip them a lot, but uh, I don't want to break this thing or, or burn my house down. So I might actually read them. Connect the power adapter to the back. <gasps> it's an American plug. I'm an Australian. Wow, this is awkward. It's okay, it's okay. I have a secret weapon. I have a transformer. Transformers. Here's the moment of truth, you ready? <gasps> oh, it turned on! Shows the last type of filament used, PLA, and the target temperature. <sighs> Instructions are so boring, but you have to read them. It's doing something. It smells funny. I probably need ventilation. Okay, now we have ventilation, and I'm cold. <sighs> I swear to God, we'll get there eventually. Alright, so I think the filament is kept in here. They give you a few sample reels. Thanks guys. Get a very patriotic mix of uh, good old red, white, and blue. All right, it's heating up. Oh, whoa, whoa, it's feeding through. <laughs> Again, I probably should have read more of the instructions. Whoa, that's something. Oh, look at that, it's like floaty. <laughs> whoa, oh, look at that. This seems to have some gravity-defying characteristics. That's kind of cool. There it is. This this is my first ever 3D pen creation. That's uh, it's pretty amazing. Look at that. It's um, abstract art. Once it's dry and printed, it actually feels pretty solid and springy. All right, let's actually try and do something. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a platform. So I'm just drawing a hexagon. And now I'm going to fill it in like this, like it's a coloring book. It's kind of like icing a cake. Somewhat time consuming, but that's to be expected if you're filling in a whole thing, I guess. All right, let's try and get this thing up. You ready? Oh, there we go. That came up pretty neat. Here you go, the item number two, a little badly drawn hex- oh, dropped. Durable too. So this shows me that you can fill things in. They're quite solid even when there's just one layer and there's still a few gaps or whatever It's it's quite solid. I'm gonna make a house All right, I'm gonna try and draw vertically. I'm gonna slow the speed It's funny when it's dry, it's really solid so you really have to get it to be in the right position pretty quick I feel like I need little nail clipper scissors rather than these big doofy things. Oh, I'm gonna try to draw horizontal. Hey! Oh, that actually worked quite well. I'm gonna try and position it so that when it dries, it dries straight. Ah, oh, bugger. It fell off. Oh, we have a box of some sort. All right, you ready? One smooth, long progression. Whoa. Oh, almost. Ah, the power cord keeps falling out. Okay, there you go. Ah, oh, it's got little bits all over it. Okay, I need to go get little nail clipper scissors. I'll be back in a sec. I'm just gonna use these little nail clipper scissors to just snip off any loose bits. This is my terrible house. <laughs> wow, that is awful. That being said, this is like one of my first things that I've made. And it, again, it feels really solid. 
I just am not good at controlling it. So I want to get better at it, but not only that, I want to explore both the uh, creative potential of using something like this, but also the practical potential. So I have three projects I'm going to start and finish in this video. The first is I want to make a much nicer looking house than this, and I'm going to take my time, do some walls and a door and things like that, and uh, maybe make it bigger, just because I can't have this represent what I made in this video. The last two projects are sort of practical experiments. One of which is I want to find a way to make it so that the power cord doesn't keep falling out of this when I use it. Sometimes I accidentally knock it out. So what I'm gonna try and do is 3D draw some sort of a harness that I can hook an elastic band onto the back and on either side like that so it sort of holds the plug in. That's just my little genius idea just then, we'll see how that goes. And then my third practical experiment is kind of more high stakes. This is my DJI Phantom 4 drone. So recently, unfortunately due to a uh Let's just say due to a crash landing, one of the uh, little panels under here is missing. Here, I'll show you on this camera. You can see that uh, on this leg, the panel is there and it's all seamless. And on this leg, we have a gap and you can see an exposed wire in there. So I'm gonna see if with this white filament, I can in a reasonably appealing enough way, not perfect, but appealing enough way, make something to cover that. It, it's gonna look a little bit janky, but you know, it might look better than duct tape and it's definitely gonna be more durable than duct tape. So uh, we'll see how that goes. So they are my three projects. I'm gonna build a better house. I'm gonna try and make a harness strap for this thing. I'm gonna try and fix my drone. For my first project, I decided to go about creating my house in a little bit of a different way to how I did it last time. Rather than draw the whole thing in three dimensions upright from the beginning, I 3D drew everything flat in sort of a template that I could put together. And I roughly used a ruler to uh, have some rough measurements that would match up so that it would look neat. Once I got the basic outlines done, I added some fake floorboards to the floor and then went throughout the rest of the house piece and I gave it a bit of a Tudor house look with the cool uh, supports and beams along the interiors of the wall. After I finished that, I took off the wall pieces and did a little bit of cleanup and then I swapped the filament for the white filament and I filled in between the floorboards of my floor with the white filament so I could have a really solid foundation and something that you wouldn't be able to see through and uh, to help support those interior floorboard lines so that they wouldn't bend or break. Once I finished with that, I detached the floor and then I connected all of the pieces together going back to the blue filament and using it sort of like glue between all of the joins. This worked surprisingly well and before I knew it I had an entire four walls and a floor all connected and feeling quite stable. So next it was time to do the roof. I swapped my blue for my red filament and did my measurements to be a little wider than the, the roof area itself so I'd have a little bit of overhang which I thought could look nice and would also hide any joins underneath. And I started off by filling in the entirety of one of my roof sides. But it turned out as I approached the end of painting in that side of the roof, I realized I wouldn't have enough red filament to do the same for the other side of the roof. So for the other side, I had a little bit of a gap thing, sort of the same width, maybe slightly thinner than the floorboards themselves. When I was finished with my roof, I followed the same process of attaching it to my house structure, again, using that red filament as a sort of a glue. And then I had a house structure I was pretty happy with. Time to move on to project number two. I started off with a bit of an experiment. I took some modeling clay and shaped it around the outside edge of the 3D pen, just so I had a little bit of a guide to the size and shape that I could use the pen then to paint around and make it exactly the size I needed. Turns out modeling clay melts on the heat of the nib, which was probably not great for the pen, but I don't know, I was experimenting and it didn't go well. So I scrapped that idea and then I moved on instead to cutting out pieces of paper that would fit around the outside of the pen so I could find roughly the size that I needed to work with. This next method took quite a bit of trial and error to try and create a shape that fit well, trying slightly bigger or slightly smaller sizes depending on how the last one went until I found a fit that worked really well. I had little hooks on the very bottom of a U shape that would house an elastic band to fit around the other side of the U. And then I created two separate little hook shapes that I attached to the bottom edge of the U, this time facing out in a strange sort of direction and using my 
white filament as glue, and then because I figured there might be some pressure on it for perhaps a long period of time, I added quite a bit more white filament around the entire structure of the strange shape I created just to make sure that it was at least strong enough to hold its own for some time. Project number three, my drone repair, took a little bit of trial and error just like the previous project, simply because I really wanted it to look at least somewhat appealing. Basically, I wanted to draw onto the drone, creating a bit of a skeleton shell that I could then take off and fill in. Like I said, it took a few attempts, but eventually I found one that worked quite well. This was a bit tricky in general because it required a little bit more drawing in the air than the other projects rather than relying on the mat. But by this stage, I had gotten used to the pen a little bit and a little bit used to the timing and pacing in which the filament came out. And I slowed it down a bit so I had a little bit more control and it dried a little bit quicker as I moved the pen along. It came off cleanly and then I filled all the gaps in with the white filament from the inside so that the outside skeleton was the visible part that already I thought looked pretty decent. So with the gaps filled in, it should in theory look reasonably appealing. Okay, so my little experiments have come to an end. Let's uh, show you what I've got. The first thing I did was, as I mentioned, I rebuilt my house because my first attempt was pretty janky. This is the result. It's pretty cool. As you can see, I started to run out of filament for uh, half of the roof. And so I sort of went with a bit of a gappy look here. But in the end, I actually think that looks even better than if I had have done solid on both sides. It almost looks like I did sort of like shading, if that makes sense. It feels really solid and I think it helps that I built it all sort of flat before putting it together. Look, it's not the prettiest thing in the world and I could have spent more time like snipping off these little bits that sort of poke out a bit. But for my first proper construction, I think it's a really fun little demonstration as to what this uh, 3D pen thing can do. So now, experiment number two. I haven't tested yet. But this is what I made. It almost looks like a wishbone, but the idea is that you put it on your little scribble pen like that, and you use two elastic bands. You use one at the top, and you go a few times over like this, and that's simply to hold it on. But the main thing I want to see if it works or not is this bit. And please keep in mind, once again, I have not tested this. So I'm just going to try and wrap the elastic around this so you have a little bit on each side and then for each of these sides I want to pull it down to one end of my little wishbone contraption. There you go, look at that! That is my plug holding on device. I can't believe this actually works. Seriously, that's actually holding it on. <laughs> Look at that! How cool is that? It doesn't get in the way of the filament. I don't have much left. I only have like a little bit of blue left. Let's let's try this out in practice. You ready? Look at that. It's a like. Just like the like you're gonna leave on this video for enjoying my great content. I'm sorry. So there you go. That's my second design. It it I it, even just drawing that little thing there. It wasn't in any way intrusive, and I love the fact that I can upgrade my scribble pen <laughs> with the scribble pen. How cool is that? And when you're done with this thing, if you want to unplug it, you can just unplug, and it stays attached to the end there, but it's still not turned on. How good is that? On and off. On. Oh my god, I'm a genius. Okay, now the very last little practical test I have was the uh, the most high stakes one, and that is repairing my drone. So this is what I made. It's sort of like a little edge sleeve thing, and the idea is that it just fits in there. <gasps> oh my goodness, like a glove. I just need to glue it in. I'm just going to use some regular PVA glue, put a little bit of glue around the edges. And gently pop that in there. That is amazing. <laughs> that's so cool. And when that dries, that's going to be pretty firmly in there. And the plastic is, is quite strong. So I don't have any fears of it breaking or falling off. And again, like looks nicer and fits better and is way more durable than like duct tape. All right, come on guys. Come on. That's pretty cool. Like the video. <laughs> now I'll admit, these aren't the most visually impressive creations. It is my first time using the Scribbler 3D pen, so forgive that. But aside from that, using this thing has been an absolute blast. Alas, I have run out of the sample filament that was sent to me, but I do have some good news. Yeah. <sighs> 
I happen to have some spare filament lying around. Seven boxes, to be precise. So, given that I only had my three little sample reams of filament to play around with today to come up with my, uh, my little projects, I want to know what you want me to build with this. So after you like this video and subscribe if you haven't, of course, make sure to go to the comment section and leave your suggestion for what you think I should make. One epic creation with this. And this stuff includes silk filaments, glow in the dark filaments, loads of different colors, flexible bundles, wood bundles, whole bunch of stuff. So huge thanks to the people over at Scribbler for sending me this. So get commenting. If you see other people's comments that you like, make sure to give it a thumbs up because the most upvoted suggestion will be the one I will first consider. And of course, if it's completely impossible and unfeasible, I will move down the line until we get to something that I can both do, but that is extremely ambitious ambitious and exciting. So get creative, leave your suggestions and uh, thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos and while you're at it, check out my shop where I sell ebooks, brushes, photo references, video courses and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there and you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now and until next time, I'll see you later.